Hello, my name's Richard. I work here in the kitchens of Hampton Court Palace, and I'm the historian that's responsible for researching the food that we cook within these kitchens. When you mention food and dining uh, and Henry VIII to people, the first thought is to think about um, chicken legs being ripped and thrown everywhere, and spices being used to mask up uh, the taste of rotten meat, and nothing could be further from the truth, actually. Um, when you look at the ingredients that we used in court cookery, throughout the 16th century, not just in Britain, but in Europe as well, then we find some remarkable similarities. We have the, the very simplistic vegetables, like the radishes that we've got here in front of us. Well, we've got a selection of spices here to go with the common or garden vegetables that we used. Uh, a lot of the spices are recognisable today. We have here, um, very simple, black peppercorns. Pepper was used in a large number of recipes, uh, so much so um, that in some cases we have to take it for granted that when it says pepper, that um, a news a quantity of pepper, that they were using a lot of it here. Uh, other spices that were used that we can find nowadays very easily are cloves. Again, called for very commonly in recipes. Um, they were very overpowering taste, the clove. Uh, they're not to my personal taste, but if you balance them with the, the rest of the spices, then you don't tend to notice them within the dish, and they do complement the, the 16th century flavour, as does this here. This is dried ginger. We're now very used to ginger coming to us fresh from the supermarket, obviously importing it all the way from China where it grows. Uh, it's much easier to get here as a dried dish rather than its fresh state. Uh, some spices that we used, that we still use today, but people don't tend to find them in their whole form, are mace. And it's associated spice, nutmeg. Uh, the nutmeg is the internal part of the fruit, and around the outside of the, the nutmeg grows the mace. Uh, unusually, the mace was used in Britain from the 14th century uh, in cookery recipes, but the nutmeg is really a medicinal spice throughout Henry's reign, so we don't tend to use that uh, here at the palace. It's here just to show people a spice they're not used to. We then enter the realms of the very unusual spices, spices that have fallen from fashion today, uh, and we have a small selection here. This spice it's called the cubeb, or the Javan tailed pepper. It's a very earthy taste. You feel it very much at the back of your throat. To go with that, we have a, a very small spice, probably one of the better names of all the spices. These are grains of paradise, or the melaguata pepper. They come from West Africa, where nowadays they're referred to as the alligator pepper. They're a very fiery taste, right on the very tip of your tongue. Very intense flavor, uh, which complements well these final two peppers that we have here, these are both long peppers. The larger one is Piper retrofractum, and that comes from Indonesia, and the smaller one is Piper longum from India. Both of these are a very, very powerful flavour, very peppery. The smaller one, very fragrant and aromatic, quite anaesthetic in fact. Um, small quantities, such as a single pepper, is enough to make you taste uh, speak like you've been to the dentist, they will anesthetize your tongue. The long pepper from Indonesia is very much to our modern palate like chili. It has that same um, piquant, spicy taste to it, but it doesn't last as long. It's not as fiery in the mouth. You don't need uh, liquid to douse the heat, uh, but it, it just adds this wonderful, rounded, aromatic flavor to food and drink in a modern sense as well. All of these spices, uh, in the 16th century were ridiculously expensive. They are truly the preserve of kings uh, and the very wealthy. But they are also very pan-European. It wouldn't matter where you went, which court you visited throughout the 16th century, whether it be the French court, the Spanish, the Portuguese, they're all going to be attempting to use the same sorts of spices because all of these in Northern Europe cost a large amount of money. What we do here at Hampton Court Palace with these is to try to give the public an idea of how they were used in the recipes and also to take away an idea of how they can use the recipes from the past in a more modern style, to get an idea that food from the past doesn't have to stay in the past. It's perfectly good to use for us today.